The best way to deal with conflict is to head it off before it happens. And a lot of conflict and differences and disagreements can be headed off before they even arise uh, with a tool that we call the power grid. And the power gram is about looking at areas of decision making inside your relationship and talking about not, this, not necessarily the specifics, but the general issue of how are we in our relationship at this time in our life going to make decisions about these areas? And decision making doesn't mean who does it. You know, it may be that I'm responsible, my wife might be responsible for decision making about nutrition in the household. That doesn't mean I'm not going to be going grocery shopping. You know, it means, that, or, you know, I might be responsible for decision making about, you know, things to do with education. That doesn't mean that I'm doing all the things around. It's about who decides. It also is an opportunity to decide what are really the core issues for you. What are the issues that are really meaningful that, that you wouldn't want decided without your input? What are the issues that are important to you but you're willing to let go of decision making versus what are the areas in your life that you want to keep your own independent right to make decisions? And there are no right or wrong answers. The right or wrong answers are what fits for you and your circumstances, your goals, your values, your relationship. So that's what the power brand looks like. It's those three intersecting circles. And what's right in the center is us. That really becomes the we of the relationship. And the areas of decision making that are in the center are what you're saying that at this time in your life are decisions that won't be made unless there's agreement. So what are some examples of things people might put in that center area? Car buying. Buying a car, okay. Buying a house. Buying a house. Big financial, big financial issues, what else? Getting married. Getting married. Having children. Having children. I tell you, with all of those, those could be right in the center, and I know other people that would put them someplace else. But I've seen people who said whether or not we have a baby is my decision, not our decision. I certainly see people go out and buy cars without checking with another person, thinking that they, they had every right to do that, or motorcycles, or all kinds of other vehicles. I've seen people without any discussion, you know, making major financial decisions. So this is an opportunity to step back and to say, what do we want this to look like? So for example, in finance, one couple may say, let's say, how you spend over 100 bucks has to be a joint decision. But if you're going to spend less than that, you know, that can be your decision. So that's just an example. But whatever's in the center is where you're agreeing that in your relationship at this time, and as we talked about, it's different during deployment. One of the things that gets people in some difficult spaces is that when we're living together under the same roof, the power gram is very likely to look a certain way. But when, for whatever reason, we're separate, people are separated, the power gram is very likely to look different. And then when people come back together, it shifts again. But people don't ever talk about it, or they rarely talk about it, and say, how is decision making changing during these different times? So again, right in the center are the areas that you're agreeing are shared decision making. And that means it doesn't happen if there's not agreement. Right on both sides of the center are the areas that you're saying, that's one of the other's decision-making area, but with input. It means I get to decide what I'm going to do, or you do, but before you do it, you're going to check with the other person. You're going to see how they feel about it, what they think about it, you know, if they have any input, you're not giving up, you're not giving veto power, but you're agreeing to check. And then on the outsides are the areas that are your own independent. What might be thing decision making that's your own area of independence and autonomy? Grocery shopping. Okay, I can tell you my house. If I bring home those chocolate balls I like, there's problems. <laughs> but I did think that was my own area of decision making, and then I realized it was not even my decision with input. <laughs> and then there's no right or wrong to this. It's really whatever fits for the two of you. So if you and Jason agree that what you do in the grocery store is completely up to you, that's great. In my, in my power brand, I know that if I buy some of the things I love, that I'm, 
you're going to get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but you know that, so you can but on no. your own decide what you should buy into. Well, <laughs> now I know. Now I know. I, you know what, I can tell you that, that Stephanie and I live a wonderful marriage. She's an amazing person. But I thought that what I let Zachary watch on TV when it's sort of dad and son time was okay. It was up to me. But she didn't see it that way. She felt like if I was going to let him watch Ninja, that that should be a shared decision. And we, could, we negotiated that. You know, and we worked it out. <laughs> All right, what's something else that might go in your own area of independence? Yes. I'm, I can't think of many decisions I make by myself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> along those same lines, like, I've got clothes from college, you know, and I'm all right with that. I, I love my clothes from college. I hide them from now because they should have me rid of them. Amen. But I, along the same lines of the haircut, I like it when Natalie gets clothes for me to wear because I know that's what, like, I don't dress for me, and I'm certainly not dressed for any other woman. So, that came out wrong, but... <laughs> But you know what I'm saying? It's that sense of, well, it's important to her, so it's important to me. So where would you put the way you dress? How you her. dress? So you be, meaning you'd be happy if that was her decision. Sure. And oh, she may be happy if it's her decision. So that's a, that's a really good example. It's about what fits for the two of you. Right. And what's most important to figure out is where are the, what are the we decisions? Because if somebody makes what one person expects to be a we decision on their own, whether it's what I buy at the grocery store, or whether it's trading in one car for another, or whether it's you know scheduling a business, a trip. And the other person's thinking, hey, that's a we decision. That can cause a lot of unnecessary conflict. But if you know that you've already agreed that these are we decisions, you know it takes sitting down and talking about it, or sending a message, or an email, or having a phone conversation. <coughs> And that if you don't agree, it's not happening. And that's where the, something like the fair fight can be very helpful. Because if there are we decisions where you don't agree, it takes negotiation. Just say, I grew up with uh, yeah. girls, you know, my, my sisters. You know, my sister. And so my sister let me help her make decisions. So if I'm thinking about being married, I just don't know why she Right. As well. <laughs> but I found out that uh, some decisions I try to help make, she won't win. Yes. And, you, <laughs> and if you had married your sister, <laughs> that would probably work out fine. <laughs> but that's a really great example. It also goes back to something I talked about at the beginning, that the model for marriage was very different you know, for, for generations and still in many places. Our parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, they had a certain model. And that model might have included how men were supposed to be, how women were supposed to be, what gender roles were. But that model was based on a whole different paradigm. It was based on women couldn't vote. It was based on women couldn't get a job. It was based on women couldn't leave if they weren't happy. And that's not the situation anymore. And as that became less and less the situation, Relationship shifted from being about security, stability, raising kids to being about love and intimacy. So this is part of that. And as relationships shifted <coughs> and women had more rights, they became peer relationships. Relationships between equals who had the same value as each other and had to learn how to share power decision making in their household. And that doesn't mean someone doesn't say, I surrender this to you. I mean, I'd be happy to say, Stephanie, you can handle all the finances, and that's fine with me. She's much better at it, you know, and that would be great. And that's not because I'm less valuable, but that's because she's got a lot more strengths in that area. Um, and that doesn't make me less of a peer. Here, anybody? I think what, like what uh, Casino was saying, growing up, you know, my dad was very macho, so the boys did the outside job and the girls did the inside. So my brother never washed clothes, never did laundry. We had to iron his clothes, everything. So now in a household of boys and me being the only girl, I have a lot of those and still do my mind where I'll iron the clothes. I, when we go anywhere, I pick everybody's clothes out and get everybody's stuff ready. That's what I've always been trained. And then I complain about it, but it's, it's like instilled in my mind. That's 
what I'm trained to do. Right. So I think what he's saying about cultural upbringings, it's still, even yeah. though when I was a little girl, I said, I'm never going to do that. I still, up to this day, you know, still iron my boy's clothes. And my sisters always tell me, you better stop doing that. They're not going to find a girl who does that anymore. So. I was going to say along those lines of like just with, with dating, I came, came from a household of where whoever got home first started the laundry. Whoever got home first started the supper that we kind of did it all as a family um, of doing those things that my dad did cook. He did um, do the outside, but he also um, did all these other things. So there's things that, are, that come naturally. I grew up, I, I, grew, I was raised by Nanny. My parents both, they were divorced. I never washed a dish, I never put a clothes away. But today, you know, part of loving my wife is cleaning the kitchen, is putting my clothes away, is doing absolutely anything that can alleviate pressure on her. You know, not because I learned it, but because that's part of being, that's making deposits and, and being loving towards her. So, but it didn't come naturally. So in your book, there's a sample list of decision-making areas. You could come up with any list you want. That's just meant to be a, a like a starter list of some of the most common areas of decision-making. You know, so for example, with the two of you, you come up with what are areas of decision-making in your relationship? And you can include kids in this too. You can include the whole family. It might make perfect sense back to that power gram to say, you know, what you watch on TV is a joint decision until your ex, or getting that new Mustang, you know, is a decision that I have veto power over until you have your own job and income and you pay your own insurance. Uh, Powergram is also very helpful for people who work for work environments that to look at inside our team how where do where does decision making fall? Because often people make assumptions about what's an area of independence versus mutual versus. Sure. I do, I do have a question. And so, yes. what if there's something that either you or your spouse can make a decision on? It doesn't take both of you to make the decision, but you're happy with yourself or her making the decision. So you can put that in both? Check both of them? Yeah. Both. Check off how decisions are being made currently. So when you look at the list, how are decisions made currently in the areas of that list? And then, wherever you would prefer it be different, you put a little note or a P. And then you let couples work with each other and to look at the list and to negotiate the areas where there are differences.